Welcome to the Hard Won Wisdom Podcast with best-selling author, Vaughn Germer and corporate innovator, Michelle Brigman. Come here weekly for career and life-changing conversations with some of today's most influential thought leaders, senior executives, and trailblazers who will share their mentoring wisdom. This podcast is brought to you by the Women's Leadership Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Fawn Germer. I'm Michelle Brigman. And this is the Hard Won Wisdom Podcast. Today, you're not supposed to have favorites, but Kimberly Marr is with us. She's a psychotherapist and a badass, and we love her so much, and she keeps going back. And so we're glad she's here and she's willing to pivot because we had a whole other idea for what we wanted to do. And then I was on my morning walk with my dog today, and I get this message from Michelle. I am picking up a vibe that you're unsettled with me. Is everything okay? Is my intuition off? And her intuition's way off. I mean, Michelle's my sister in life. And what we kind of realized is that we're all a little off kilter right now because the world has gone batshit crazy. And so I texted Kimberly. I said, you know, can we pivot the topic of this this podcast to come up with a way to cope with the insanity of what all is going on in the world. Speak to what's going on because just in case start when this air. Okay. So for those of you who may listen five years from now at the moment, (laughs) we've got everything going on in Ukraine. The Middle East has blown up in a scary way. Putin went to go to China to go see Z. Um, And we just always are hearing talk of nukes, shootings. Oh, the um, Congress can't even work right now, but that's going to be fixed later today. Our our country, as we all know, is divisive and a a mess. People are crazy. You know, I'm working on a book and I was writing about something that happened this summer when I was driving over a mountain pass and this truck came up behind me. And apparently I was going too slow, you know, and I'm coming over the top. I'm going the speed limit. You're looking at a 360 panorama of everything that God has created. I mean, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. And the truck starts honking at me, gets around me. Then the person on the passenger side lowers the window, sticks the arm out and flips me off. And then the driver rolls the window down and flips me off. And then they speed off, except they aren't really speeding off because for the next 15 minutes, they're still right in front of me because they can't go any faster. And I just thought, doesn't that say everything about the anger percolating in so many people at this time? And and I think in, in people who probably are pretty good people, I hope, but are just stretched. There's just such a lack of civility, patience, understanding, and compassion. And so I'm wearing down on that. And Michelle, you're, you're my touchstone. You're helping me get through that. So we thought, well, let's, let's ask the sage <laughs> Kimberly what we can do. And, and she's like, I'm dragged down by this too. So I thought maybe we should just talk about collectively what we're all feeling while this is happening. So, Kimberly. Thank you for having me again, ladies. Well, it's always love having you. Yeah, I totally drug my feet this morning when Fawn sent me a message and she's like, can we pivot? And I was like, no. (laughs) I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about it because I'm finding myself really struggling to find regulation on this whole everything right now too i have so many big overwhelming feels and i'm just hurting for all the people that are hurting and i don't know that i can have a really functional wise conversation about it today but i'm going to jump into the mix and try because if i'm struggling everyone else is too probably and i think it's on (laughs) us to create community so that people know they're not alone in it well, oh, and the other thing that's going on, and we were talking about this earlier, Michelle, is that people are having significant financial issues now that they didn't have before. Yeah. And 
because uh, everything is so expensive and it really paints a different picture for how we live and then how we can um you know plan for our futures so it's like all of this stress coming at one time so i know you can help us with stress management but i i think it's also going to be a little bit of how to avoid catastrophic thinking because right. didn't we this morning dare to say world war three but i mean i've had conversations in the last yeah. week about is this the end of days i mean it's just so much so i so guess i'll ask this question to kimberly uh, like is it okay to feel sad like just sad yes abundantly yes without hesitation i mean here's the deal we're all human and it would be a fool's errand to think that we don't have feelings or shouldn't have feelings about things so the, the number one thing i always say to my clients and anyone who asks is yes whatever you're feeling allow yourself to feel it it's okay the challenge gets comes in when we get stuck in a feeling and then we start adding lighter fluid to it we start adding fuel to it and we get stuck in perseverating on it and glomming on more and more so yes to your question it is sad there's so many hard things happening out there so many people are suffering right now that's that feels like the overall theme to me is so many just normal people around the world, just good humans trying to eke out existence are suffering. And that that's what's weighing on me right now is the people driving the bus are lunatics and seem to be largely out of touch with the people that hired them to run to drive the bus. Or, or they're talking care. about things that don't even freaking matter. Like it's... No. It's a bunch of noise versus all of this stuff's happening and you want to distract me with you know, completely insignificant conversation. And yeah. I mean, just our own government and where we are right now, I look at it and scratch my head and go, you know, if if you or I, any of us ran a business the way <laughs> they're Oh, good Lord. Or any if if we acted as CEOs or even middle level management the way some of our our elected officials who are our employees are behaving, we would be out of a job before you could say go. Like, it, but what? Yeah, They're right. allowed to, to do this and to continue and it just gets loonier and loonier. So, and bit. we represent all aspects of political views here. Like we have yeah. a wide range and we're all feeling it. It is not limited to a certain party or anything. This is just, we're struggling. How did it get so off the rails? <laughs> like, you know, my personal belief is it started going off the rails at 9-11. It just seems like there was life before and after. And the reality that we knew, we didn't even know how good we had it, which I always say, you know, this, this may be the good old day right now. So I mean, it could get worse, but I don't and, you know, there are, okay, this may be the other lesson, too, because I spent the summer traveling the country in my van with my dog, and I wasn't looking at the news that much. Yeah, I kind of knew what was going on, but I, it's certainly not like my habit here. I'm a, a former journalist, or I should say a lifelong journalist, and a news junkie. And so when I hit the wall when I'm writing or working, the first thing I do is switch screens and go see what's going on with the news. And I have long said you have to do news detoxes, but I think that's a survival method right now. Because when you, yeah, I mean, when you see people being blown up, human beings, right? And um, it, it's, it's no secret I'm Jewish. I am devastated by what's going on in Israel, but I am also devastated by what's going on in Gaza. And, and these are human beings. And I can't do anything about it. That's, that's the worst thing is can't do anything about it. The, the only power we really have is, you know, every how many years we can vote for people who don't listen to us anyhow. So if we're powerless, is it a crime to 100% stop watching it? Or is it our job as citizens 
to watch it so that we're not complicit. I feel like it's somewhere in the middle, right? It's not as black and white. It would be nice if we could just make that decision. But I think uh, being careful consumers of media, careful consumers of the news is really important. We have to choose the sources that we, we watch or look at or read, listen to. And then we have to also really be responsible for checking in with ourselves and going, what do I have the bandwidth for right now personally? Like there are times, there are days, and then there are times within days where I have to recognize I do not have the bandwidth. I do not have the emotional capacity, the bandwidth to really consume the news right now because it'll tank me and then I won't be productive in doing the work I do to help people one-on-one, right? So I have to decide. I have to choose when I can watch it or look, consume it and how I do it. So like for me, that looks like I don't watch a TV video much at all anymore. I choose to read, uh, number one, because it insulates me a little bit from the really gross, horrific graphic things. I know it's going on. I'm not blind. It's horrific. But when I see those images of other human beings with such suffering, I know it's happening, but I I don't need to see the gore because I don't have the bandwidth today. So I think being a careful consumer and knowing your limits and knowing where you are in your own self is really like that's the, that's what we need to focus on. I said I've been in uh, what I call it is I've been in I, I call it hibernation. I feel like I'm in a hibernation mode that I and I use that term because um, I'm not asleep, but I have to like insulate myself from all of it. And need, I kind of like I need extra padding, <laughs> you know, like I need extra padding to to, to distance myself from some of it because. Um, it is so overwhelming and I feel, um, I feel guilty. Yes. I feel guilty because I have the option of yeah. not leaning into it all. I feel, so I have this whole guilt thing and Ooh. then I have this gratitude of, you know, by the grace of God, I live where I live and it's right. not touching me right now. So I feel gratitude and I feel helpless. And I feel afraid. It's like all of this stuff that's just coming up that has it. You feel like you're over, oh, you're all over the map in terms of. I just feel like I'm all over the map. So what I then choose to do is I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go into hibernation and I'm going to protect myself as much as possible from it. And I haven't been spending much time with friends. I haven't been going out and exercising as much. Um, you know, I've got a trip planned to go see Fawn and I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. We actually canceled it two weeks ago because I said, I don't, I, I feel really uneasy. I don't think I want to go. So it's affecting so many things in my own yeah. way. And I know I'm not the only one because I'm getting the phone calls from my friends who are like, I feel like I needed to call you. I'm feeling sad. Fawn's story about our conversation this morning. And I think we just need to say, be honest about I don't have all the answers, but I'm right there with you. Yeah, it's getting to us. Ah, yes. And, you know, and I was thinking last night about the the things that I, I make a note here, the things that I stress about are a joke when you think about what other people are going through, right? And, And in my mind, they're, they're so big and they're they're not part of me thinks we should just be like saying gratitude prayers from morning to night because these stresses we have are so minuscule right even in the best of times we all live better than 99 percent of the rest of the world right but in the worst of times look how much we have and I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just so grateful that that, you know, that those are not my problems. And that right. um, I, I, what the hell is going on? Yeah, we do have privilege, you know, the three of us and, and most Americans, right? We, we're not, we don't go to sleep at night for fear of a bomb dropping on our homes. We don't, uh, 
wake up and try to go find food or we have electricity, most of us, most of us have running water, uh, you know, we are very blessed and I'm not losing sight of that. So yeah, first world problems, right? And I think that our privilege also comes with some responsibility. Um, I'm, I'm just, that's the part that's hardest for me right now is I'm really trying to hold energetic space for all the people who have so much less than me and are suffering so much suffering and it's senseless to me. I don't, I don't understand why it, why it needs to be happening. It, it makes no. absolutely no sense to me. So I'm confused, but there's people suffering, immense suffering. And, and so many, like, you, you know, you hear the anger people have about the problem at the border, which is a significant problem. I am not minimizing that. But can you imagine if you were that person so desperate, right, to get, and, and I understand this has to be dealt with. I understand what everybody's saying when they're screaming at me on the other end of this podcast. But we're so lucky that we don't have to be on that side. Right. I mean, and these people are fleeing for their lives with their families. Yeah. I mean, I can't say that I wouldn't do the same yeah. if my situation was like theirs, right? Just trying to save themselves and their families. It's, it's, it's a totally normal human response. You know, I think the thing that's interesting is right now I'm noticing, and I think you said it too, there's so much anger right now. The world is just angry. Everybody's angry. There's, that's what everybody's fighting over. We're fighting over everything because we're angry. And as a therapist, when I look at the emotion of anger, anger usually is a secondary emotion. Not always, but like most of the time, anger is a secondary emotion. And what I mean by that is anger is usually like the bodyguard or the bouncer at the door. It's the big burly older brother that is protecting or guarding or fronting for some softer, more vulnerable, more uncomfortable emotions. So we look at all the madness in the world. Uh, the political clashing, uh, you know, wanting to keep people at the border away, whatever it is, the anger is really, I think, underneath both of it, it's just fear. 100%. People are afraid that somebody's going to take away their things. People are afraid that things are changing. People are afraid that their resources are going to be reallocated and they won't have enough. It's just fear. And that fear is manifesting in anger because people are unwilling to acknowledge in, in large that we're scared. Yeah. Like, does that resonate? Yes. Well, and I would say I go back to what Fawn said earlier about 9-11 kind of being a trigger or a tipping point. And I think we've been living in this place of fear for so long. But for a while it was we felt like we had the upper hand because we were being the we were retaliating we were defending our position so you kind of rallied around that and got a sense of strength and uh, stability and security and now it's almost like for i speak for myself now it's like it's like i'm just waiting i'm about to be i'm about to be victimized and i'm waiting for it and i'm anticipating for to, to anticipating it and I don't like it because I don't understand what we're doing or should do. And then I get pissed off because I do not want to feel afraid. I do not want to let the world around me start pushing the fear on me. And it makes me mad. And I want to find my grounding and say no. And I'm kind of like overwhelmed with it all. This morning, somebody I'm very close to said she thinks it's time that she gets a gun because she's scared somebody's going to break into her place and she's going to have to d defend herself. And this is not a place that, you know, a terrorist is going to break into, right? But there is a visceral fear now. Um, and, and it, it, you know, she does have a fear of an intruder too, but this was after a conversation about, you know, what is going to happen in this country. And... And, and she says, I, I feel like I need a gun. And I'm thinking, that condo is the last per place that, right, that <laughs> something big is going to happen. But it's hitting us where, where we live now. And, 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 and by that, not in our homes, but in our, our sense of security. Yeah, I, I think we don't feel safe. So when and, you... Sorry. Well, how, how do you tell people how to deal with fear? That's a tough one. 
I mean, here's at the end of the day, this is the one truth I know. Uh, fear comes in the absence of a sense of control. And control is what we try to have when we don't trust. And I think in large, most of us just normal people, we really don't feel, we don't trust in the people that are making decisions, huge decisions worldwide. We don't feel heard. Um, and that's a really disempowering feeling. So, you know, all I really have control of at the end of the day is this moment right here, right now, my decisions and my thoughts. Those are the only thing, two things I have control of in the entire universe, my thoughts and my behavioral choices, decisions, right? And so when I start to feel all the dysregulated, the fear that whatever the big, powerful, icky feels are, I bring it back and I bring it back to breath and I take a big, deep breath and I say, okay, what, what right now do I really have control of? I can, I can regulate my breathing. Okay, I can do that. That's a behavioral thing. I can reel my mind back in from stressing out about something that maybe could happen in the future because that's all smoke and mirrors, really. The future is not something we know we can control. We can't, nothing, we can't do anything about it. And likewise, the past, we can't really affect any change over what's happened in the past. All I have control over is right here, right now. So what's the next right thing I can do for me right now? Maybe it's taking a big breath and grounding myself. Maybe it's breathing out some compassion for the people who are suffering in the world. And maybe it's doing something kind for myself or someone else. I don't know what it is, but this right here, me in this moment, right here, my thoughts and my behavioral choices is all I've got. And that's pretty powerful. I mean, if you really just no, it down to that. when you shut down tomorrow and the what ifs and everything, that is really powerful. Yeah. I mean, when I talk about like, you know, all of us are humans, we all have moods, right? We all feel sad. We all feel afraid. We all feel joy. We feel happiness. We feel excited. All of that, right? We all feel them. But when we are looking back over our shoulders in the history, right, that that kind of regret, that woulda, coulda, shoulda, that becomes, with a pattern of looking over your shoulder, it becomes the mood called depression, right? Likewise, if we're spending too much time in the future, what, what ifing and, oh gosh, what, you know, all that, the, the, the emotion of fear, which is totally normal and healthy, becomes the mood of anxiety. Yeah. Right. It becomes a pattern. So in order to kind of keep from those developing in those extremes, you got to keep bringing it right back to, to the now, right here, right now. What is, what can I now, do as, and if we all collectively start to do that, right, we all take care of this and stop focusing on that. What can I do? What can, how can I be a good human in this moment for myself and others? Um, I think that feels like the only thing we can do. Yeah. And I think it might be powerful. I've increased my daily meditation practice. Like I, I you know, I always did affirmations and everything. I do those in the morning, but I have really kicked up my um, meditation in the morning. I do like a 45 minute one, which is a lot longer than my seven that I did. And then I have consistently been doing my gratitude at night before I go to bed. Because to your point, I am looking for something that I can bring back in that sense of control and awareness and appreciation. And that has been helping me a lot. I think that also too, I mean, I'm a, I'm a believer that, you know, all living things, we're all on a grid, right? An energetic grid, I feel like in this, yeah. this world of ours, right? We're all somehow connected, you know, quantum physics, all that good stuff mm -hmm. kind of indicates there's some truth to that. And so I think if all of us just kind of do our part to send compassion and softness and uh, love, maybe even out there. If we just all of us individually radiate just a little bit more love, maybe the the fabric will start to weave in, fill in all the holes. You know, if we're all focusing on that instead of focusing on the divisiveness and what's different about that person from me, and what is that person trying to change in my world or take from me, or the fear, right? Just it's just trying to really intentionally pivot. Where focus goes, energy flows. Yeah. And I have so much, I feel so helpless and so sad for what's happening all over the world. But today it's it's the conflict going on in Israel and Palestine. And I send so much compassion because, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend. And 
there are lots of other women just like me who are suffering so much for no fault of their own. They're just living lives. So the, the sending compassion and sending love, just kind of breathing it in and out to them, I'm hoping that makes a difference. That makes me feel more peaceful inside. That's one thing I can do. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we have to remind ourselves to not, uh, not put every group in a box and think that these groups and a total are bad. There are bad, there are awful terrorists doing awful things. And um, and there are people that live in that region that are beautiful, wonderful, kind, loving people. Yeah. So watch ourselves that we aren't just uh, making assumptions and categorizing. Yeah, I, they're all the same. I remember I, I wrote a paper in high school about, you know, what the Germans did to the Jews. And Miss Niederprum, my teacher, <laughs> <laughs> didn't like my phrasing. And she wrote, not all Germans were not. Yeah. And with, which is a very true thing. And, I, you know, it's like, there are clearly people who would love to eliminate all Jews. But are those the people that we're fighting, like um, that are dying? It seems like the, the ones dying are the, well, we don't have to go down this route. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. It's, yeah it's just incredibly sad that there is that much hatred there's just, and it, it, it's, it, it, you know, like this whole thing, which is really catastrophic, is how much worse can it get? Oh, don't say that. I know, it's true. And so oh. what I do, it's like when you're talking about the mind, <laughs> my trick God. is I'll look out there at, at a, a tree and I will just start counting the leaves because if you're doing yeah. something that minus, you have a task, so it totally pulls your head out from that thinking and you know tell me something about depression because you know i'm somebody who has had depression in the past when i was much young, younger but then when situations would give me a heavy dose of the blues i've always been able to manage it through exercise prayer outdoors i have my go-to is when something like this happens is this out and out depression or is this situational that's a hard one to answer really cut and dry, but this is a situational stressor. The, just the heavy weight of the world these days is, is, is weighing us all down. It's like a big, heavy weighted blanket that we're not a cozy one, an icky one that many of us are feeling, even those of us who have not typically struggled with like clinical depression, so to speak. So yes, to your question, yes, it's situational. And yes, it might also be more, you know, foundational for individuals, right? And so for people who are compromised, right, or for people who are feeling behind the eight ball or are already in a place of struggle, you add these big, like global size pressures onto people and it can be really hard. It can be like the final blow that really kicks it into something bigger. So it's important to be checking on your people and how are you doing and, you know, how can I be of service to you and do you, would it be helpful to, do you need a vent? Do you need to talk? Do you need to process? I mean, it's know, every time. I have had two friends kill themselves because of Donald Trump and a third one because of what happened in U Ukraine. That's just nuts. It's just nuts. I, I, I just don't know even what to, to do with that. Well, I mean, what can you do, right? Again, what do you have control of your thoughts and your behaviors? And, and when I feel powerless like that, the only thing that I think, at least as a citizen, in this country, what can I do? I don't know that they entirely listen to us, our elected officials, our employees, but what do I do? Your girl here is writing and calling uh, my employees, my elected officials, <laughs> probably minimum six to 12 times a week because that, yes, ma'am. Do you that really? Is, absolutely. Yeah, they, work, they work for me. They work for us. 
And I'm going to be the thorn in their sties that keeps reminding of that and going, hey, this isn't what we want. You, you are not, you're, you're not acting on what we have asked you to do. And so I'm, that's something, that's how I feel like a modicum of control, because here in the United States, we do have a vote. We have a civic response. It's a responsibility. I think it's a right and a responsibility to kind of let these people know what do we want as a collective. And I think overall, the American people are not happy with what these power hungry lunatics, ding dongs are doing. Good Lord. But I don't, I don't, it's like for the people who are on the brink, like I described, writing isn't going to do anything. Of course just, not. I, it's like, I, if anybody hears this and is ever on the brink, write me, you know, do it's like, write somebody. Right. It, you know, you're hundred percent right. It's like when you get that kind of thing after the fact and you realize what could I have done? You know, I did, I, was there, was there more? And, and how, how do we gauge this with our friends to say, you know, I'm here. I, Sometimes when people are that depressed, that's really even hard. It doesn't get through, right? So one of the things that I say instead of I'm here, let me know if I can be of support to you is I say, you matter to me. Just letting you know and reminding you that, you know, my world, in my world, it's important that you're here. Just that thing, you know, because they may not even have the capacity to reach out. But there's something about knowing even just that one person, their existence is important and their okayness is really pivotal. I say that all the time. You matter to me. You being here is really important to me. And if but, you don't have the capacity to talk or reach out, I want you just to keep know that and I'm going to keep telling you that. That is beautiful. And it, I'll, I'll call out um, a friend. I was telling Vaughn this earlier. A friend of mine called me last night. Um, and she just called and she goes, I just think I need to tell you today that you're awesome. You know. And I haven't talked to her in a while. Like, I, But my point being with the group is there's the things you say when you're confronted with someone and like that, like you matter. There's also the reminder that when you get that nudge and someone is crossing your mind to pick up the phone or send the text, don't put it, aw don't oh. put it aside because back to what you said earlier, Kimberly, about we're all kind of connected energetically. I do believe that when somebody crosses your mind, they need to hear from you. So well, take that second and just do something. Because last night when she called me, like I, I had a rough day yesterday and I, I have no words to say how much that simple action meant to me. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So, so maybe we can we come up with three things that we can all do that. Okay. I think if we can all make a pact that no matter, because I think that some of the slide is that we have to exercise regularly. So that helps us modulate some of this. And, and can I also just add for some people, exercise feels daunting. So I would even simplify it as just move whatever that looks like to you. Right. If it means yeah. you're sitting in a Dancing. chair. Or sitting in a Vacuuming. chair and just doing some stretches, just move your physical body, get the blood going, get the movement going, because that does re release some dopamine, right? That does actually release some chemicals that help bring us out of that fire flight energy, a, a good calm movement. So it doesn't even have to be exercise. If you, that's accessible to you, exercise. But a lot of people, that's, that's what not I do when I hibernate. I move at a much different pace than I would <laughs> normally <laughs> why do we hibernate okay wait, let's get three suggestions people yeah, can yeah, yeah. all right what, what's another thing mindfulness well, I think, like you uh, said. returning to breath returning to breath i mean your breath is a way so when we all get wound up right about all these things whatever that looks like that's fight or flight right that's a that's a evolutionary biological response to a stressor or something is saying we're not safe so our whole body activates and goes okay fight or flight you know locked and loaded muscle tension heart rate, breathing, kind of checking the environment, either energetically or in real. So the breath is a really amazing, what we call a vagal break tool, bringing your breath into regulation. So when we're in fight or flight, things are really tense. 
we breathe more shallow, right? We don't do a big, deep, full, deep, satisfying inhale and a really slow, complete exhale. So breath, if we can just stop and go. And maybe the third thing would be what you were talking about, um, controlling our thoughts. When we'll like, like making a, a deliberate plan for how to get a handle on what's going on in the, the insanity. <laughs> And what's so interesting about that, and I always tell my clients this, you know, a lot of us feel like we're a victim to where our mind wants to drag us, like that we have no agency on on where our thoughts take us, right? But that's not true. Our mind is like a, a puppy. You know, if you bring a new puppy home, you're not going to let that puppy just run amok in the house and poop on the on the corner and chew up the corner of the couch, right? You're going to take corrective and you're going to teach and train that puppy how to behave. Same with your mind. We do have agency. I say this to my clients, my 20 somethings love this. I say, look, you're not your mind's bitch. <laughs> so we do have agency over our mind. So when we are aware that our mind is dragging us somewhere that's not really helpful to us or healthy for us, you can say, no, not today, Satan, or not today, mind. And you can rein it in. You can put the little leash on them and yank it back and go, okay, pivot. Let's focus on something that actually is useful, helpful, pleasant, good, present, you know, because that doesn't do anything for us. So you do have agency over your mind. You're not your mind's a bitch. I like that. You really, thank you. Like <laughs> on top of those three things today, um, there's a couple things that you mentioned that just are very timely, and I wanted to repeat back to our, back to our uh, listeners as we wrap. But I I appreciate it too. A sense of control is being responsible to check in with yourself, and then respond appropriately based on what you need right now. And I think that right now is brilliant because I think sometimes we say, "How am I supposed to act all the time?" Like it. It lets us just have that moment of grace mm -hmm. based on what we need in the moment. And then I also, um, you reminded us to be careful consumers. What are we feeding and what are we fueling ourselves with? What are we paying attention to and be very intentional about what we want to bring in there? And then finally, just thank you for just saying it's okay to feel whatever we're feeling. Yeah. And just to, uh, just to, sometimes we just have to settle in that for a little bit. Don't let ourselves get stuck there, but you don't have to um, deny yourself your feels. Right. There was some studies, and and I'm I don't have the exact information, but I, I have read something that said something like every emotion emotion that we experience as humans, right? If it's just that one feeling, like I feel sad, if we if we just allow it to exist without adding fuel to it, without like, for example, I'm sad. Oh, my God, I'm so sad. Am I always going to be sad? I've always been sad. It's going to be so sad. If we can avoid doing that and we can just say, you know, right now I'm having the experience of feeling sad and we can allow ourselves to be in that moment, that feeling literally will pass within three to five minutes. So I always say to people like, really? Yes. So if you could experience, so, so tell me this, Vada Michelle, if you could imagine the most intense feeling of, say, sadness that you've ever experienced, if I told you, if you, if you just don't add lighter fluid to it, if you don't, if you don't heap on more stuff, if you just sit in that feeling, could you tolerate that feeling for say five minutes? Would it kill you? No, yeah. oh, you could tolerate it. So it's, it's a control thing. It, it's, you do have some agency. If you just stop the perseverating and stop the heaping on and the catastrophizing and the future tripping, da, 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 da stop just stop tell your mind no not today we're not doing that and just say it's i'm allowed to feel sad and in this moment i'm feeling sad and it feels like this in my body and it's okay it will pass it works you, it, you, that's you why gotta, you shouldn't fight the cry right. like if you need to cry just go ahead and cry because immediately you you immediately feel better yeah there's a really great author, if anyone's interested in following this down a rabbit hole. Her name is Pima Chodron. P -E oh, I love her. I tried to get her in my books before. She's really one of Never. my favorite. And yeah. I, she has a book she wrote called When Things Fall Apart. Now, if that isn't a book for our times, I don't know what is. I've read it probably a hundred times, but she talks about the human tendency to, uh, you know, when we have a feeling that we don't like, we try to push it away, right? If we, ha we try to pull in something we want instead. So we're mm -hmm. always in this push me, pull me game with our emotions. 
if we could just be in the feeling for just a moment, just a moment longer than we were able to yesterday, that's where the lessons and the learning and the clarity happens. So just sit in it for a minute. Stop adding lighter fluid. Just be in the sad if that's where you need to be. Ride the wave. Don't get stuck on it. Don't throw lighter fluid on it. Just just allow it and it'll pass. Beautiful. You know, it's like maybe by us taking this time to just kind of put it together, maybe we did come up with a good solution. (laughs) I feel a little better myself. So yeah, I do. That's all I can control right now. I can't control whether this helps somebody else, but I feel a little better right now. I feel I feel seen. I feel understood. I feel like I'm not alone. Well, I want you to know, you matter to me. Thanks, Ron. You too. And to all of us, we love <laughs> you, Kimberly. Come back. Okay, everybody, we'll Thank see you, you next week. Oh, wait, there's more. Tell people how to get in touch with you. <laughs> if people want to, <laughs> if people want to reach out to me, um, I do therapy in Florida and Arizona, but I also do coaching uh, nationwide. My website is best damn you, just like it sounds. B e s t d a m n y o u dot com. We love you. All right, everybody. See you next week. Take care. Bye. Thank you for joining the Hard Won Wisdom Podcast with best-selling author Fawn Germer and corporate innovator Michelle Brigman. Join us weekly for career and life-changing conversations with some of today's most influential thought leaders, senior executives, and trailblazers who will share their mentoring wisdom. This podcast is brought to you by the Women's Leadership Network. Visit hardwonwisdom.com for more on this podcast and for links to Fawn and Michelle's web pages and social media. Also, be sure to rate, subscribe, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort, and we'll see you next week.